Coffee Break Italian, Season 1, Episode 24. Buongiorno a tutti e benvenuti a Coffee Break Italian. Io sono Mark. Ciao a tutti, sono Francesca. Buongiorno, sono Katie. And we're back, siamo tornati, with another episode for you to help you with your Italian. Come state? Io sto molto bene, grazie. E Katie, come stai? Ho un raffreddore. Ah, poverina. Sì. Hai un raffreddore. Allora, ti fa male la gola? Mm, un po', sì. E ti fa male la testa? Anche, sì. Oh, che disastro! Che disastro! <laughs> well, we hope you're feeling better soon. And today we're going to be looking at verbs. So, undoubtedly, you'll be feeling much, much better. Great. <laughs> the best medication, some verbs. Some verbs, see. absolutely. Okay, well, it's time to get on with that lesson. Of course, we should mention, if this happens to be the first episode of Coffee Break Italian that you've ever listened to, you should know that you can go back and listen to all 23 first episodes. There are lots and lots of episodes already available to help you build your Italian language skills. Okay, let's begin today's lesson. Cominciamo. Sì. Sì. Okay, now before we get on to those verbs, we need to do a little bit of review from last time. Last time we were visiting the pharmacy or the doctor, and we need to do some review of the words and phrases we learned then. We've already heard some of these words and phrases in our introduction, as Katie was explaining her her woes this week. But let's do some little bit of revision just now with those phrases. So, first of all, I'll give you some time to think about it, and then we'll ask Katie... Can you tell me how you would say, I have a sore stomach? Katie, can you remind us how you would say, I have a sore stomach? Ho mal di stomaco. Bene, sì. Ho mal di stomaco. Now, you could also say, Mi fa male lo stomaco. Remember, it's lo stomaco. Mi fa male lo stomaco. Literally, my stomach hurts me. Or, o mal di stomaco, I have a sore stomach. I wonder if we can add in something here. For example, we could say, I have a sore stomach, I can't eat. How do we say, I cannot do something? Non posso. Non posso. So, do you remember the word for to eat? We have done this a couple of times. To eat is? Mangiare. Mangiare. So how would we say, I can't eat, Francesca? Non posso mangiare. Non posso mangiare. Okay, so put that all together and say, I have a sore stomach, I cannot eat. Mi fa male lo stomaco, non posso mangiare. Sì, bene, mi fa male lo stomaco, non posso mangiare. Let's use that same construction and try it with another phrase. Let's think about, I have a sore throat. I cannot, well, I cannot speak. I have a sore throat. I cannot speak. Mi fa male la gola, non posso parlare. Bravissima. Mi fa male la gola, non posso parlare. Something else that you might not be able to do if you're... If you have a sore throat, something that Katie loves doing is singing. Now, you know how to say to sing in Italian? Cantare. So, how would you say, I have a sore throat? Choose the other one this time, okay? So, I have throat ache. I cannot sing. O mal di gola, non posso cantare. What a shame. (laughs) Oh, che peccato. (laughs) That's a nice phrase. Che peccato, which means what a shame, what a pity. And the whole phrase there that Katie said was... Ho mal di gola, non posso cantare. Okay, try this one, Katie. This is slightly different in that we've not done this one, but you're going to use your knowledge of other languages here and uh, hopefully our listeners will be able to do the same. I'd like you to see, I have a cold, I cannot breathe. See if you can work this one out. Ho un raffreddore. Non posso respirare? Eh, La nostra Katie è fantastica. (laughs) Esatto. Respirare, to respirate, really. 
Um, of course, we've got the word in English, a respiratory problem and so on. In this case, we're using respirare, which means to breathe in Italian, similar to the French respirer and many other words. In fact, last night I was watching University Challenge, as I do. For those of you not in the UK, it's a quiz show and it normally has really quite tricky questions. And one of the questions was about the word that's linked to the Latin for lightning. And it's an English word, and that English word happened to be fulminate. Now, ah, I got fulmini. that from i fulmini. Yes, so ah. I used my knowledge of Italian to answer a question on University Challenge. It was the <laughs> only correct answer I got in the whole programme, but I was quite happy. <laughs> <laughs> so there you're using respirate or respirare for this verb, to breathe. Let's try a couple more. Perhaps you have a sore... Actually, let's change this. I want you to explain... You're at the doctor's with your father, Katie. And I want you to explain... My father has a sore back. He cannot sleep. Now, I'm going to help you with the he cannot. Because I'm going to tell you it's the same as you can or you cannot in the formal form. And we've done that one. Okay, so my father has a sore back... He cannot sleep. I don't think we've learned to sleep. We probably haven't learned to sleep, but again, I would like you to use your knowledge of other languages or indeed your knowledge of English and think of, for example, what's the, the room in a hotel or a building, for example, where lots of people sleep? Think of that word and see if you can come up with to sleep. Hmm, okay. I'm going to guess... Dormare? Almost, quasi, it's dormire. Dormire. Just like in French, dormir. Okay, so dormire is to sleep. I'd like you to translate, my father has a sore back, he cannot sleep. Okay, Katie, go for it. Mio padre ha mal di schiena, non può dormire. Very good, Katie, bravissima. Mio padre ha mal di schiena, non può dormire. Now, I, being the, the, the very nasty person I am, I'm going to pick up on one slight thing here, and that is the pronunciation of the word father. Katie, can we hear father? Padre. <laughs> Francesca, let's hear padre. Padre. Okay, it's a strong D in there, and just like dormire, padre. If you've ever done Spanish before, don't let that Spanish D influence your Italian. It's not padre, but padre. Padre. Okay. Sí. Padre. So let's hear one more time your answer there, Katie. Mio padre ha mal di schiena, non può dormire. Sì, sí, è perfetto, Katie. Bravissima. Okay, so he cannot sleep, he has backache. What about a tricky one here? because the ones we've been doing so far are too easy, I think. What about, my eyes are sore, I cannot see. Now, I cannot see, we've not done to see. To see is? Vedere. Vedere. So try saying, my eyes are sore, or my eyes hurt me, I cannot see. Katie. Mi fanno male gli occhi. Non posso vedere. Sì, eccezionale. Mi fanno male gli occhi. Non posso vedere. Very well done. That is a really tricky one. First of all, we've got to remember the plural verb. Mi fanno male, because there's more than one eye that's sore. And then we also need to remember that complicated plural of l'occhio becomes... Gli occhi. Gli occhi, so mi fanno male gli occhi. My eyes are sore and non posso vedere. Okay, now we've done quite a lot of review because it's been really useful to go through some of those words and we've also been introducing you to some new verbs. We've had to speak. I'm not able to speak. How would we say that? Non posso... Parlare. Parlare. Okay, we've also had I am not able to sleep. Non posso... Dormire. Mm -hmm. And then, just our final one there. I am not able to see. I cannot see. Non posso... Vedere. 
Okay, so you've noticed that there are three different endings of those verbs. Parlare, vedere, and dormire. So in Italian, verbs can end in are, ere, or ire. And each one of those verbs has what's called a different conjugation. They form the patterns in a slightly different way, but they're very regular. You can recognise those patterns pretty much most verbs. And what we're going to do now is look at one of those regular verbs. We'll take parlare and we'll conjugate it just like we did with avere, learning the six different parts of the verb. So let's take parlare. First of all, we look at the part for I speak. Parlo. Parlo. Okay, so we have already said I speak a little Italian. How do we say that? Parlo un po' di italiano. Molto bene. Parlo un po' di italiano. So I speak is parlo. Now, what about you speak, the informal form? Parli. Listening in to Francesca? Parli. Parli. Okay, so I speak parlo, you speak parli. A different ending there at the end. So how would we say you speak French, for example? Kitty? Parli francese. Bene. Parli francese. So you speak French. Now, parlo, parli, the first two parts, we need to look at the third part. And that's the part that we use for he or she or indeed... You in the formal form. So how would you say, for example, he speaks? Parla. Listen again to Francesca. Parla. Parla. And Francesca, how would we say she speaks? Parla. And what about you polite speak? Parla. <laughs> so it's the same each time. You might be wondering how we know who's t- who we're talking about. Well, we can do that in a couple of ways. First of all, the context very often tells us. Mm -hmm. Or we can name the person who's speaking. Katie parla un po' di di italiano. Si. There are words for I, you, he, she, it, and so on in Italian. But let's not worry about them for just now because we don't need them. The verbs stand for themselves. So let's say he speaks German. Can you remember the word for German? He speaks German, Katie. I can help, Katie. Okay, go for it, Francesca. Please. I feel very generous today. <laughs> tedesco. Ah, yes. Parla tedesco. So he speaks German, parla tedesco. And she speaks German? Parla tedesco. Esatto. So parla is the third person singular to give it its proper form. The first person is I. The second person is you, informal. And then the third person we're talking in, the third person, that means we're talking about he, she, it, and indeed the the polite form of you. Okay, parlo, parli, parla. We need to learn the plural forms too. Francesca, how do we say we speak? Parliamo. Parliamo. I love this. This is my favourite. Parliamo. It just sounds so, we speak Italian. Parliamo italiano. And one of the nicest things about that part of the verb is it can also be used to mean let's do something. So, let's speak Italian. It's like when we say cominciamo. Esatto, let's begin. So, let's begin. Cominciamo. Let's speak Italian. Parliamo italiano. Let's... Eat. Eat. Mangiamo. Okay, so we can use that yamo ending, parliamo, mangiamo, cominciamo, to talk about we do something or let's do something. Both possibilities. Now, let's think about the you plural. Francesca, how would we say you plural speak? You all speak. Parlate. Listen again to Francesca. Parlate. Katie? Parlate. Okay, so you all speak. You all speak English. Parlate inglese. Parlati inglese. Okay. And then the last form, our third person plural, the second person plural was parlate, you all speak. And then the third person plural is they speak. Parlano. Now listen carefully to this one because the stress changes. Listen again to Francesca. 
parlano. Parlano. So they speak parlano. Okay, let's put those three plural forms together. We speak. Parliamo. Parliamo. You speak, plural. Parlate. Parlate. And they speak. Parlano. Parlano. So we've now conjugated a full verb, a present tense are verb that's regular. And that's a very special thing because it means we can apply those same patterns to other verbs. And you can now start to talk about things that you want to talk about. Like, for example, they all eat pasta. I wonder if you can work that one out. Using those same endings, we've had parlano, they speak. So how would we say they eat pasta? Katie. Mangiano pasta? Sì, bene. Mangiano pasta. Or, for example, we may also want to say uh, you, singular, sing a song. A song is una canzone. So, how would you say you sing a song? Katie? Canti una canzone. Okay. Canti una canzone. So, we're applying those same rules with different verbs. The o i a endings for the singular forms, and then the yamo ate. Oh, no. <laughs> for the last one. The last one's a little tricky to, to, to talk about just the ending because it changes the rhythm of the verb. Sì. Parlo, parli, parla, parliamo, parlate, parlano. Parlo, parli, parla, parliamo, parlate, parlano. Parlo, parli, parla, parliamo, parlate, parlano. Sì, perfetto, molto Fantastico. bene. Okay, now we've been looking at some really tricky stuff today, looking at these verb conjugations. And I think what we should do now is think ahead to next time when we're going to be looking at another tricky topic, and that's the topic of speaking on the phone. It's something that always learners find pretty difficult when you've got to speak on the phone in a foreign language. I don't like it at all. Uh, indeed. So next time we'll be learning how to speak on the phone in, in Italian and very often something that you need to do when you're speaking on the phone, perhaps for a reservation, whether it's for a restaurant or for a hotel, is give your name. Now you know how to say, my name is, you can say... Mi chiamo. Mm-hmm. And if you give your name, sometimes you would be asked this question... Come si scrive? Katie, can you work out what that would mean? How do you spell it? Esatto. Literally, how do you write it? Come si scrive? How is it written? How do you write it? And if you're asked that question, there's one thing that you absolutely need to know, and that is, of course... The alphabet. The alphabet. Sì, l'alfabeto. L'alfabeto in italiano. So let's go through it together. I'll say... How we would say the letter in English. Francesca, you're going to say it in Italian. And Katie, you can repeat, of course, after Francesca. Let's begin with A. 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 B. 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 C. 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 D. 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 E. 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 F. 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 G. 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 H. Aka. Aka. Little more tricky that one. H again is? Aka. Aka. I. E. E. Then we have an interesting one because the letter G doesn't exist in Italian. No, unless it's a foreign word you're using in Italian. If it were a foreign word, how would we pronounce it? A J. <laughs> <laughs> Very foreign. Okay. So let's go. J. J. You can also hear ilunga, literally long I. Long I. Okay, so ilunga or J. Sì. Let's go with J just now. Va bene. J. J. Then we have another letter that doesn't exist in the Italian alphabet officially, and that is K. Kappa. Kappa. And then L. 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 M. 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 N N N O O O P P P Q Q Q R R R S S 
S T T T J U U V V but you can also hear V Okay so, so V V or V V Okay and what about W You can hear V doppia or V doppia Okay, so in both cases, it's doppia at the end. V doppia or V doppia. Uh -huh. And actually, you can also hear doppia V or doppia V. I think because <laughs> of... <Italiani>. Si, <laughs> we like to confuse you. <laughs> so let's go with... What, what one would you use personally? Automatically, I would say V doppia. Let's go with that then. V doppia. So we are at W. Let's go to X, another letter that's not in the Italian no. alphabet, really. X. X. And then Y. Again, two options. Y. Y. Or Y. Y. Mm -hmm. Which means Greek I. Okay, but, but again, Y isn't really used in, in Italian words other than words of foreign origin. Yes, like yogurt or yoga. And finally, one letter that's definitely in the Italian alphabet, and that is Z or Z. Zeta. Zeta. Okay, this now means we can spell different words. And you know what's going to happen now, Katie. We're going to put you to the test. Oh, dear. Before we do that, let's go through the alphabet in, in groups of several letters, just so that we can get into the rhythm of saying all the words. Here goes. So, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, C, D, A, F, G. A, B, C, D, A, F, G. H I J K L H I J K L H I J K L M N O P Q R M N O P Q R M N O P Q R And lastly, S T U V W X Y Z. S T U V W X Y Z. S T U V W X Y Z. Perfect. Wow. <laughs> well done. Let's try quickly before the end of this lesson spelling some place names in Italy. Let's start with hmm, something an nice one. and easy one. Yeah, Number one then, we'll go with Rome. How do we spell it Rome in its Italian version, which of course is... Roma. Let's give our listeners a little bit of time. Katie, come si scrive Roma? Si scrive R-O-M-A. Si, perfetto. r o M A Roma. Okay, numero due. What about Milan? And that is Milano. Kitty. M I L A N O. Giusto, sì. M I L A N O. Milano. Okay, let's try number three. Let's go with Bressanone. Oh, you love Bressanone. <laughs> you do. mention a, it all the time. It's a beautiful place. <laughs> I do like it. Okay, so Bressanone, Kitty. Has it got one S or two? <laughs> got two S's. Bressanone. And one N and then one N. Yep, that's the right one. <laughs> B-R-E-S-S-A-N-O-N-E. Wow. Well done. One last one, Katie. A nice easy one to finish. And this is number four. I'd like you to spell somewhere where I know we have Coffee Break Italian listeners because one has contacted us recently to say hello and that they're enjoying listening to our lessons in the land of the midnight sun in Reykjavik. How do you spell that? Come si scrive Reykjavik in italiano? Mm, non lo so. <laughs> è facile. Ok, Katie, over to you. I'll give it a go. R-E-Y-P-S-Y-L-O-N. 
K J A V I K Wow! È giusto? <laughs> sì, ok, confermi. <laughs> well done, Katie. Ok, there are going to be more spelling challenges in our bonus episode this week. And there's also some more verbs in our bonus episode. We hope that you've enjoyed this slightly different episode. But for now, we'll finish there. So that's it for this episode of Coffee Break Italian. Of course, you can find out more about Coffee Break Italian at coffeebreakitalian.com. And if you would like to access that bonus episode, our video versions and our lesson notes, you can head over to coffeebreakitalianplus.com. And we would love to send you your first lesson free. You can find out more details on that page. Come and practice your Italian on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash coffeebreakitalian. And if you are on Twitter, we are at Learn Italian. E come si scrive? Che cosa? Learn Italian. Learn Italian. Sì, si scrive? <laughs> L-E-A-R-N e poi I-T-A-L-I-A-N. Benissimo. Allora, è tutto per O-G-G-I? C-I-A-O. Arrivederci! <laughs> ciao, ciao. This is a production of the Radiolingua Network. Find out more at radiolingua.com.